when the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, eventually um, some of Putin's personnel records became available in the West. And he wasn't a great KGB officer. Why? Because he was incredibly politicized and incredibly independent and incredibly authoritarian and not really interested in the details of being a spy. And that has played out. He has always conducted himself as being reminiscent, longing for the return of what should have been, in his mind, the post-World War II, post-Cold War Russia, and incredibly wounded, victimized by what happened in the 80s when the Soviet Union collapsed. We haven't dealt with that aspect of him yet. And unfortunately, it is the aspect of him that is going to drive the conclusion of this conflict. And Radek and I had a conversation last night. Unless this man mm -hmm. and those around him can return, continue to exist, and thrive in post-Ukraine war Russia, mm -hmm. there's not going to be a resolution. If Radek's idea on you know, what the end game should be, uh, and so much depending on his personality, is he the kind of personality of whom you think no. No, he's, uh, I mean, I've met him a number of times too, and uh, he is a small mind. He is, uh, his uh, background is, uh, before KGB, he was a little thug in, uh, in Leningrad, essentially. And so he, he believes, he, he has a very pessimistic view of human nature. He thinks people are there to be bullied, to be bought, to be blackmailed. Uh, that's, that's his fundamental vision, and that's how he made this huge mistake, because he thought he could, uh, he, he could intimidate Ukraine, he could intimidate the West. He, he cannot imagine that there are people who may not be bought, who will not be bullied, and who have something which is called an ideal. That is not his, his way of operating. Uh, and that's why he has made this alliance with the oligarchs, because he knew that if it was a pure transa transactional alliance, it wouldn't work. So he needed to have that kind of Russian ethno-nationalism to, to, to make it work. Just like you know, Trump in the, in, in the United States, if it was just about money uh, and billionaires supporting him, that would not be enough. Uh, so he had to make America great again. He has a, so these kind of people, uh, they, they need the varnish of, uh, of a sort of pseudo-ideology uh, to, to consolidate their power. If I could uh, add to that, uh, pulling some of these thoughts together, uh, I think Mary Beth is absolutely correct that the personalities of individuals and their uh, ability or not to be leaders are critical things here. So I had a chance to meet Putin years ago, back when he was, uh, in my impression, he's a little guy with a big chip on his shoulder. Uh, back from St. Petersburg. And so uh, uh, he grew up in a, uh, with a mindset from his professional background of bullying people. And so that's what he's continued. And I think he made a huge miscalculation. He probably took a look at Zelensky. Ah, oh, this guy, an actor, a comedian? And uh, this, this country, uh, it isn't even a country, it's a province of Russia. We're gonna take care of these guys. And he had nobody likely pushing back you know, because he has a big ego, he's been the tough guy in charge for a decade plus, and so why not? He'll do it. Uh, probably his undoing. But again, uh, this, this interesting mix of uh, long-time historical factors, uh, of grievances, of a feeling of oppression, and then the hubris of, I'm a, I'm a tough guy, I, I'm, I'm the big guy, I'll take care of this, and now we have a mess. Yeah. So we've got to understand this and walk it back. No, and I think the key is understanding it. I worry, because we tend, um, particularly in American politics, uh, to demonize people that we don't understand very well. Uh, he's wrong, he's bad. Uh, I, I think if you ask Putin, he would tell you he has a profoundly deep soul, and his soul is Mother Russia. And by discarding leaders in the world, I mean, we're, we're probably soon to have that conversation or something like it about Xi, if and when Xi moves on, on Taiwan. And uh, it, when you try to understand what the decision making is with the Arab world, well, you know, if, if perhaps a decade ago in Israel, well, the Arabs really don't have the soul of the Judeo-Christian ethic, and therefore they're, to our own peril, that we do that. And I think one of the things as an intelligence officer that you learn is it's, 
it really is about understanding the enemy. And in his case, his soul is deeply Russian, uh, deeply embedded in this, this dignity of what was in the past. Um, and unless you embrace that and, and deal with that aspect of him, rather than discarding and say, he's a slightly lesser human being, uh, then you can't win a conflict. You know, the Russian soul, and they're, they're, they're very different Russian souls. So I, I don't like this essential, essentialization of, uh, of Russia. I'm not so sure that it's about the Russian soul. I think he, he, he taps into that, but from all his actions, he, he behaves like a little thug. He uh, assassinates people. So is that, is that the Russian soul? I don't think so. I think it's, it's someone who understands the need of people to belong, to be in something bigger than them. That he got it. Uh, but then he does it, you know, Hitler, the, the German soul. So he understood that you need people to come together. And he did, very, he did it very well at the big meetings at Nuremberg and all that. Does that mean that he had a deep sense of the German soul? No. These people, they use, they instrumentalize uh, what, uh, what they see. And they do it at their level. And when it's a level of a small mind, it's a level of a thug.